Hi there. In this video, I'm going to talk about my wireframe pre-visualization exercise. This is a pretty good practice for hard surface design because it allows us as 3D artists to become better at imagining the wireframe of any model that we plan on modeling. In a way, this is when you become like a psychotic 3D artist where you do a lot of modeling and then you go down the streets and you start to see things in wireframe. So we're going to actually purposefully utilize that obsession of being able to see that wireframe. And the reason why we do this is because before you dive into any model, you have to sit back and just plan ahead what you plan and how you plan on modeling your geometry. I grabbed this from Google and this is the credit for whoever made this available. So thank you. Okay. So what I want to do now is to look at the car. It's, it's an iconic car for very good reasons, not just performance, but the amazing appeal of the curvature of this car and the um, hard surface feel to it. It's a pretty nice mix between organic and harsh hard surfaces. So the goal of the exercise is to uh, find out the healthy edge flow for the pieces that we want to model. Let's say, for instance, I want to model this back here. And I want to find out what is the most efficient way or the fastest way possibly to model it with the least amount of redoing. Because whenever you're modeling anything, ultimately, in my personal experience, I've always had to figure ways to redo things better and faster. So for instance, if you look at this one here, uh, when you're in the modeling mode, you might not think too much of it. But when you start with this exercise and then you inspect each piece, like this piece here, for instance, the um, the areas here, the skirt. But what I want to do is to get to the point where, okay, let me break this down in the most effective way. This is ultimately a cube that could start like this way, this way, this way. So for this exercise, what you are doing, aside from that inspection that you should always start with, for modeling. In this very exercise, what we're doing is to dissect these lines into what makes them edges or lines or edge flow. I want to clarify that we need to draw with straight lines because we are representing the edge flow. Take a look at this. If I connect them right away, what does that tell me? It tells me that there's no way this is going to be effective in just one segment here. Instead, I need to break it to another edge flow here. And then I would need to push that vertex in. So ideally, what I would do is, uh, let me just uh, make the edges thinner. This is one edge, one edge. And therefore, I need to uh, build the edge from the other side in a way that corresponds to two edges so it would be even ideally okay so i'm gonna do the same now i'm going to try to make the same mistake here notice how if i go to the center of the end here which is here right so if i were to draw the end of this side here you would notice that there is a huge shift where this is much bigger than this piece which tells me that ideally what I want to do is to start by cutting it into two pieces like this. And of course, it's fine that I am missing that curvature because when you smooth the geometry, you're going to get that. But technically speaking, I now have the right form. And I also need to make the corresponding middle segment here. So I would do this and then connect these pieces. And because I have a middle line here, it is ideal to follow along. Now, do not make the following mistake. And this is where this exercise shines. You need to really imagine the surfaces. You need to really imagine the wireframe. Don't do this, please. This doesn't really fulfill the exercise 
for your benefit. Instead, what we do is to understand that this piece here goes this way and then this way, and then the geometry should be this way, right? So now, when I go and model it, I fully understand that this is a cube that needs pretty much these segments. So that is what makes you more uh, a more skilled 3D designer or modeler, at least. So this is more focused on the modeling, not the design. But, you know, I keep saying design because this is in hard surface design. Anyways, so this is an example here where you have an idea, a really good idea about what the geometry is going to be. Right. So if you go here and make that curve, it's like, oh, OK, just a little bit of bend here that I'm missing. Right. But if you do that here. Big, big difference. So now I am fully aware that I need to start with it this way. OK, just a little bit of curvature here. That's completely fine. And now this needs to correspond like if this is if this here is 10% of that full curvature or a line and this is here 90%. So I need to correspond in the same way with some flexibility. So maybe this is the 10%. So I'll just push it just to get that right curvature and then I would make that straight line there. And if you notice that you definitely need more subdivisions, you can make it as smooth as what's going to be the final geometry for it, uh, final form of geometry. But that's going to be too excessive. Instead, I would just I would be completely OK. Just you not drawing all the way this much, but instead just going this way and this way, because that is enough of, a, of evidence for me to know that you know exactly what you're doing and you're planning it perfectly. Um, now, one of the things that you would keep in mind is that you need to always keep the distribution of faces to be as even as possible. Meaning, there's a big gap here between just a teeny tiny small, which is, as I mentioned, you know, roughly 10% and 90%. So just to distribute that a little bit, and because we ultimately need that curvature here, I'm going to break it to another one here and another one here. Now, this here is, is a different case. Um, actually, it looks like this. So in this case here, I would need to plan the geometry for that exhaust. Um, and then I could split this one here. And technically, if you want to have um, a more uh, accurate subdivisions, you would plan for it this way. So it would correspond to that curvature detail there. And then you could, um, you could also segment it this way and this way. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that for a piece of geometry that looks like this, ideally, we want to aim for symmetry. So it helps me on starting with the center and then making that symmetry here. Depends on the car. Sometimes the symmetry doesn't have to have a line in here. Instead, you could have a line here and line here. So this here tells you that there's so much curvature that is missing. And therefore, I would have to plan this way. Now, here's the other thing that I want to caution you about. When you're, when you're drawing the geometry of, or when you're thinking about the geometry of a car like this, you would be thinking like this way. The subdivision to be like this way, right? But it's not actually how it's supposed to be. Instead, you need to make the edges in the most relaxed way that works for the geometry, which is going to be somewhere like this. Of course, especially after you end up kind of pushing it this way. Um, so don't do it this way, because in this case, you are kind of um, you're biased to the curvature that you're seeing here. Instead, 
uh, you want to make it this way and then later the geometry is going to go this way so um, this is the fun part where you start to think in completely in a completely objective way about the wireframe And notice this, this curvature here or this direction of that edge actually represents that little change of surface in here than this one. So this one feels this way and this one feels this way because it's bumped out, right? So it also makes more sense um, in terms of the geom the actual design of the car. Sometimes it helps to flip things up uh, as well, so we can stay objective and uh, we plan things more effectively. So now as I leave you with the time lapse for the side that I finished for the car, I want to emphasize that this exercise is also ideal for us to predict areas where we would have stars or faces with five edges or triangles and um, plan ahead for when or how we can avoid them or how we can actually make those triangles or stars not to affect the look of what we're working on in some areas you can throw as many stars and triangles as you want as long as the surface accepts these kind of surfaces and uh, edge flow then you should be fine so the thing is if you go into the modeling process and you face those on site or live sometimes it takes you a sit back and uh, it could take you some time to really um, figure out a way to dodge those edges that you don't want because in some cases um, with hard surface it is much better to have quads unlike organic or animated mesh quads are not necessary this is one of the misconceptions about hard surfaces like a lot of people are obsessed with quads but you don't always need them so uh, this exercise is gonna allow you to predict where those uh, surfaces are how to avoid them and uh, whether to avoid them or not or how to push the geometry and one of the reasons I came up with this exercise is that I can be productive by doing this kind of pre-production of my modeling process, whether I'm on the bus or whether I'm just um, looking at a photo um, in a situation where I don't have access to the computer, for instance. So I can still be productive and... Uh, the uh, the the mechanism of me dissecting images whether with draw overs or just in my imagination this is a very healthy and useful process because once you go into the modeling you feel you're very familiar with uh, with the model and you don't have that uh, fear or anxiety or stress or intimidation so i hope you find value in this exercise and I hope it makes you a better designer and a 3D modeler.